welcome, welcome to the music real talk. We're on Cruise to the Edge with Mr. Alex Sill. Um, yeah, we want to we want to find out how you think about things. <laughs> don't dig too far. You know, you know I don't know. If you want to know. <laughs> well, about things that have to do. With yeah, like uh, now, even though even though this podcast is supposed to be about music, we already talked about music. Yeah, we agree. Today we're going to try. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to try to talk about bit about music. Uh, so yeah. For people, people don't know people who uh, who listen to our podcast and have not been on the shit. Don't know, but you sat in with us. Yeah, uh, it was awesome. Yeah, it was thanks for having me. It was pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I was surprised first of all because I just sent you the thing, being like, "This is like an open thing in F minor. This is like two five and this." And then you're just like, you know, all the melodies and shit. And like one day, it's like Jesus Christ. Oh man, that's too easy. One of the dry time uh, honor the the music that you guys wrote. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, it was like honestly, me and uh, Nick, like, we, like we've done like the fusion chops videos together, which are online also, and we kind of talking to you about your style and always have from ideas, and uh, honestly, like we've been scouring the net. To find like licks to steal from you, <laughs> like like watching everything in like half time and figuring out some of the motions. And I have to say that like in our show, that's like that's the most exciting I've I've heard in a couple of like because I only know you like from online and from like the protocol shows. And man, like you have to get yourself a band that that's the point. Yeah, like from Melbourne Club. No, not more than cover band, but like, but like, you know, it's just like that setting where it's just like fusion guitar with like long, long solos and they're building. It's like, dude, that felt so good. Like, we were, uh, it, it felt like, you know, the band's just kind of like, you know, pushing you up. It's like, there were a lot of players, like there were great players like Nuno or something, mm -hmm. where they kind of do the thing they do. And then it sort of plateaus, they can't like kick it up a notch. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, we do step by opening and opening. That's really fun. Well, I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I, uh, I think uh, a lot of that comes from like just paying attention a lot to like a lot of my favorite improvisers and trying to, you know, take notes on the other aspects of music that I don't know, guitar players might not always be paying attention to. Other aspects of of uh, an improvisational setting that would what like actually Lyle Mays put it pretty well. He, you know, he talks about uh, the normal considerations that go into music, the dynamics, the you know, the form, uh, melody, harmony, and he said, but what about it being a much more larger cube or a larger shape, like this, so to speak. Like, what about drama being involved? Uh, you know, what about seeing that as an element of music? So, so, you know, paying attention to guys like that, I think, uh, it made me realize over time. Oh, it's well, it's not just about the notes you play. It's about how you're you're able to use those, uh, you know, uh, to create a, a an arc. Yeah, during a given solo, solo. right, um, and that's not always easy to do. Sometimes you know you reach a point and you're like, I am out of steam, and I'm I need to end my solo now. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. So uh, I reached that point, but I really, and I'm, I'm like, I'm going back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you take take an anger course. <laughs> it never works. <laughs> it, it, never it, it never works. It never works. But it always happens. It's called redemption course. Yeah. Yeah. Like redemption course. Yeah, but uh, I I, I definitely see what you, what you mean. Like, what are, I'd say, what are things you, so drama being like an element, and I totally agree with that. Yeah. Which, which players do you feel like have a little drama and okay? Yeah. Like, or a little, what was it, like, is it like your soul stuff? Or I mean, Lyle's a great example. Mm -hmm. Lyle Mays is a huge hero of mine. I think he's one of those guys that whether it's, you know, the course of 30 seconds or three minutes, he's able to build a very dynamic story and say what he has to say. And yeah, it's like a pacing thing. Mm -hmm. Almost Michael Brecker is another beautiful example. It's like whether he was, you know, playing on someone's pop record, 15 seconds solo, 
right. fitted more, you know, you could rip for ages and still continue to build in, in intensity and have that bar, the dynamic bar stretch throughout the solo. Yeah. Um, so it's just like not, not losing interest and just everything sort of feels like it's still building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what other tools are you using to do that? What's that? What, what tools are you, you feel like you're using to do that? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. It, it depends. I think the more you can transcribe, the more tools you have in your toolbox, so to speak, technique, you know, technically, uh, the more options you have. Yeah. It sounds like a basic for you. For you, that's transcription. It's like a big. It's a big part of it. Um, and thinking about range, register. Um, so things kind of tend to start when guessing low and up. And up, and up high, and then the, the uh, maybe the, the frequency of notes. It's like all this sounds kind of yeah, just like the dance but, you're getting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it, it varies. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I want to open up and uh, get more harmonically dense rather than just playing single notes. Mm -hmm. Or I uh, you know start off a solo playing uh, softer, playing more. Uh, dense structures and then going to the lead line stuff and taking the overdrive. We have a lot of options as guitar players. Yeah, yeah it's like, especially for yeah. notching the solo. Yes. You know, it's like it's like a clear kind of section. Yeah. Like the means just like stop touching that high hand and to the right click and it's just like right like here now. Yeah, exactly. And then it's especially like, you know, with guitar, there's like this to me this awkward thing, like if the sound you're using is too heavy, too early in the solo, and you feel so naked. Like the right, the Nisa Beans album and some like cymbal wash. Right. For, for it to sound like you're not, it's not scary to play. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but I think the stuff you're mentioning is like those are aspects of orchestration in sure. a way. There's a, I remember I had a, an orchestra, a study of orchestra class, and uh, the teacher said something super pointing, which is color clarifies structure. And if you think about, you know, how, uh, a symphony or, you know, any given tune helps uh, or establishes structure, oftentimes it is through color. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, you know, if that color involves something harmonically or an instrument takes over the lead uh, as opposed to the section before. Mm -hmm. So if we're thinking about how we do that as soloists, you know, changing guitar tones, going from a clean sound to a, a dirty sound, those are very they're they're connected those things yeah 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 but on the sound level I think it's it's really like you know i was listening to you for a while but like you know standing on stage with you the thing that really stood out to me that i didn't think is going to be like that is the frequency range you're occupying which mm -hmm. is like very like like it's not low mid it's not high mid it's just mid mid just like it's like it feels like the sound is really beaming and there's not and it's very shaved up on top there's not a lot of highs mm -hmm. at all yeah and you know and it's sort of like also shelved in the bottom because you're playing typically with like small speakers yes and they can't produce like very low frequency so you know michael oh shit yeah I just, uh, yeah. yeah when did this happen no it's just not it's supposed to be yeah. okay <laughs> there you go I guess God's Lord, hey. <laughs> <laughs> He's not impressed. Yeah. Well, this is the cutest little mic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on. Mario. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so it's like, you know, for me, like, it's funny. I play with a sound that has like a little bit of highs and it's like, like when we were so long, I really thought like it kind of like, you know, if you'd see it on an EQ, I'd and oh, shit, maybe we should just go like collarbone. Like sometimes oh, yeah. the ta it's the fabric. I'm just gonna do that. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm just gonna pray. Yeah. <laughs> um, Probably around the next. So yeah, for me, like it was. Uh, yeah, like the, when you were playing, it just felt like, you know, if you're looking at like an EQ, it was like my, like my sound felt like it was like here, and then like when you saw it, it's like, just uh, there, like you know, it's like a different frequency, and I was like playing like chords behind you. Like it felt like it's wide open 
to be a company it made me really think about that like you know because we've always played without keys right and without comping behind me so like the way i was set, setting up my sound was like power trio yes same one like, yes. you know like right reverbs right delay it's just like it's like this element sort of filling up that frequency range between the guitar and where the cymbals start. Right. And it's like, you know, but like your sound's just like so much more focused and like in a way it's just like surprised how cutting it is because mm -hmm. he was like standing in front of the yeah. stage yeah. and his sound just like comes right at you. Oh, oh wow. wow. So that's really cool. And then the so, well, wow, that's just so intuitive to you. I think so. I, it's like a sound I like that I'm going for. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. I generally don't like super high register stuff i mean i'll i'll manipulate the tone knob a little bit like i ride that a lot during gigs to try and figure out how i want to cut through the mix or if i think that something's getting too muddy when you're playing how often are you solely with your tone knob on 10 does that ever happen yeah it, it, sometimes but the, the guitar and the setup i have is kind of naturally a little darker it's, it's got that softer chambered sound um but sometimes I do. Okay. Yeah, or if uh, if I'm playing like more glassy rhythm part, you know, yeah. um, oh, the tone up will be generally higher. Yeah. yeah. But for soloing, like single uh, and stuff. Yeah, it's it's probably between you know two and five somewhere uh, around there. But it, you know that can change during the course of the solo too if I feel like I want to cut more. Yeah, double for sure. Um, there's something that you mentioned to me a few times, the fact it's just not language that we use in our band. Mm -hmm. And what you said, it's like, um, oftentimes you're going for a time feel. Yeah. For a specific time feel. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Uh, it's a good question. Well, I kind of look at it like uh, in comparison to metronomic time, uh -huh. which is just but the way I look at it anyway, be, being able to hold a steady beat, keep keep up with the metronome, so to speak. And then there is the kind of uh, relative way of looking at that since so the time moving and then you're able to manipulate it, um, playing behind the beat, ahead of the beat, right on the beat. That gets more into time feel like the choices the player is making as it relates to that pulse, you know. That's exactly what I'm getting at. How would you quantify, how, how would you like, define the thing you're going for, but not the, the way you want to make your 16th of feel against a group, your 8th of feel against a group? This, it really packs a lot of punch. Like It almost feels like there's like this, I don't know how to call it, it's like against against feeling a lot of times you're playing. You know what I felt when, when I was listening, thinking that... <laughs> You know, the way Yanni plays the way I play, we we'll play with a lot of other ones. Mm -hmm. And it makes it that it's very, it's basically the attack where I hear is that the attack of a saxophone is really makes it the attack of the singers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're playing like a plank. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, like it's, it's, it's a dubs together. And the way you do it, which is more like a home player, like I'm a little way from playing on guitarist to play with what I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the way you play, it's more like a home player, but it's more like Dallow. Mm -hmm. It makes it that the notes, even if they're accurate, they don't, they don't, like, the attack is not together. Like, even if it's together, it's kind of envelops the attack. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you all know the envelops the attack of a drum. And that makes it sound a little bit against the drums, even when you're riding the mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it makes it pop out just a little bit to me. And then when you hear... Yeah, it sort of makes it like a focal point, you get like less in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, even when you're playing subdivisions, it's like, typically you don't do that. Like on a phone booth, you're playing 16 notes, you know, you're right, you're, you're right in there, like with a... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and when, when it feels that you're right on it, it's like the stuff that I do is when you play the lead and it's fast up the beginning with that, it does sometimes but it does not less. Yeah. But I always imagine kind of like a drum roll. Yeah. And then it's like such old notes and it, when you, it sounds like you're like exactly what, so it's basically your 16 of like a little bit 
Dal nostro flow di cosa l'hai imitato? Le tue attention? Ma io ho un po' di tempo per me. Da tutti i tanti tu vedi. E tu vedi che hai avuto un po' di tempo. Sì, penso che quello che hai menzionato di pensare come un horn player, penso che sia. I don't know, maybe that's not what I'm always going for, but that definitely has uh, a huge, or has had a huge effect, I think, on my playing. Mm-hmm. That, that kind of softer uh, attack, or the, the time feel, again, like everything, every single little thing dynamically, articulation-wise, goes, plays a role in your time feel. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're ghosting certain notes, because if you're attacking every single note, the time feel changes. Right. Yeah. It's just a part of the, yeah. you know, it's their couple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I think for me, like, that's always, because, you know, it's like the physical side of playing music and the conceptual side, like, it's never clear what's leading what. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I tend to think that the physical is the more... Uh, You know, we'd be like, you do what you do and you kind of like think about it a little bit later. But, you know, for me, like, you know, just I spent some time with some of your minds and uh, it's like the problems, like even when I get something that, you know, I, I get some type of a command of like a short little snippet of a thing that's sort of like what you do, I have no way to connect it to the rest of what I do. You know what I mean? It was, it's just like, It, it 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 doesn't like the way I conceptualize like improvisation like the way I'm, just the way even like leaving the notes aside the way I hear rhythms against a groove is almost like a drum fill mm-hmm. you know what I mean like I really it's no, hard it's exactly that when it's, when it's, yeah so it's like from playing a funk you're like, do, 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 do. Every, like almost every note is articulated if I'm using like legato stuff. It's just like, well, the system we use is for cut, right? So everything is. Yeah, for the end of it, it's like, it got really deep. So it's just, that's how we think about rhythm. So, yes, of course, that's how it's so done. So, like, with, with rhythm, we might, you know, we start to think about, I guess, the rhythmic side of improvisation. Yeah. How, how did you approach that? Like, what were some of the things like you did, you know? Just, yeah, because you do a lot of stuff. You use, like, you know, a lot of quintuplets, a lot of fast subdivisions. Is is that something that was, like, super conscious when you're working on it? Not always, but I I think uh, what no matter what the subdivision is that I'm working on, like, if I'm working, you know, 16, no, triplets up to speed or 30-second notes or whatever, I want to have a feeling of clarity. And, I mean... Yeah. It almost goes with, without saying that's what we all want to do. Um, but being able to have each note uh, speak clearly and have the rhythmic, be able to have that rhythmic quality come across and it not just be a blur. So even yeah. when I'm thinking about legato, I, I don't want the sound to be this kind of nondescript like yeah. blur of notes. Uh, even if they're going by quickly, I want each note to be able to stand out and have its own zip code as the yeah. wide says right yeah. each note needs to be able to speak for itself so working on my left hand uh, the finger independence i think uh, plays a big role there. yeah and it's just like i guess you spend time with like the same kind of idea just moving into different subdivisions yeah i might uh might have an exercise like if, if i am doing exercises sometimes just you know i'll be playing over a track playing over changes and working on certain rhythmic ideas but if i'm working on a more um how do i put it codified like exercise yeah maybe i'll i'll take a you know a pattern that goes through all six strings play 60 note triplets for example and then move into another subdivision play 30 second notes um as a, you know you can come up with endless uh sure. like, you know amounts of exercises sure yeah sure yeah. and change it up a lot too it's not always like the same thing yeah what's your favorite thing about your one play my i don't know <laughs> 
Um, that's a tough question. Yeah. Because <laughs> about my own playing. What stuff do you think you do really well? I don't know if I do anything really well. <laughs> I feel like I'm uh, always trying to, you know, one day I might feel like, oh man, I'm getting somewhere, you know, and then I feel frustrated with it, you know, a few days after. Even if it's yeah. something like people ask me a lot about, for example, the, you know, the legato yeah. aspect of my playing. I could say, oh yeah, I feel like I've gotten some places with that, for example, or I, I feel like I've become a, an accomplished composer in some ways, and then, you know, a few days later, you know, you feel that way, or, you know? Yeah. Um, but beyond just being a guitar player, I, I definitely identify as, like, you know, a composer. I think that's important. I, I don't think it's enough to just be a guitar player. Oh, I got it right, too. Um, that's, that's the deal. That's yeah. the deal you get with God. I will, I will make songs for you. And yeah. I will, uh, put you know it's like I would, I'd never understand. No, I actually think that that's what peaceful fusion. My fusion level, the few within my fusion level that popular. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of them. I yeah. think that they didn't really have great songs. And if you look at people playing start the fusion, the stuff they cover is like heavy and good to Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah, there's, some, there's like ten songs, and none of them are like real. I mean. Yeah, like well, they're the jammy. Yeah, they're, they're the jammy, jammy, or they're really, really involved in a way that's not uh, necessarily uh, singable. Yeah, or or or, yeah. or people just don't have them together. Like you know, it's, right, it's very right. unlikely to be a situation where everybody in the room knows how to play skunk funk. Knows how to play skunk funk, uh, right? Exa exactly. Yeah. and uh, I mean it's an evolved tune, but those are the guys that still stand out: the Breckers, the Matheny's, sure. you know, the the. People who had that compositional yeah, fortune. Yeah, with, with all the, we all in a lot of ways part of a problem because we also our songs are not just for jamming. Yeah, we're so much having on stock. Yeah, 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 but you know, that's yeah, <laughs> that's a, it, yeah, it's it's a part of yeah of, of what I mean. Again, you know. We had an experience the other day here playing the Jeff Beck set for the first time. We only rehearsed. Yeah, great right. job. Oh, so thank yeah. you. And uh, yeah, it was just we had we were standing on stage. We're like, this is crazy to just play on E minor now for like the next five minutes. Right. It's like it's crazy that the melody is just we walk b e a, and it's like and everybody's just like, yeah, it's right. like, this is supposed to be like a somewhat of a it's not like a jazz audience, but it's. It's also not a Taylor Swift audience, you know, they hear them, they listen to complicated music, but the fact that those melodies, it's like it's acceptable to stand up there and play it like that, just like whole notes tied together. Where, where, where? It's like you do this with the It's like, I'm just like, what are we, what have we been doing? Yeah, it's just an overkill for you to sing in, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's like, man, I, some of these things are just, it leaves so much space for the drummers. Yeah, but like, turn, like, I was thinking about when we were playing three way jam, like, blah, 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 Buy that record. If you don't like it, I'll give you the money back. Uh, that it was one of those. And yeah. of course, I didn't. Yeah. Return the record. Yeah. It, it was. I remember listening to like because we've ended as lovers, and that being like one of the first tunes that I really started to think about the possibility of improvisation over. Um, yeah, like what yeah. a beautiful song. Yeah. Uh, Stevie it's Wonder. Good. Yeah. We were. Uh, what were we gonna say on stage? The only time in the story is just uh. Think of a podcast, but yeah. Um, uh, what do you think about it's? It's similar to me. The thing that I don't understand, I guess, of people is what they hear when they hear music and kind of how they always like how Somebody they think about it. How can they? When you hear something, how you make some, how you put it, how you divide it into focus, and in your eyes, when you hear a new player, for example, 
like how what do you judge it on? Because you have to judge it in something. Mm -hmm. in something. Sure. The one, one the thing that you look at people is playing, let's say, if you look on an Instagram or whatever, or a show, but the first thing that comes to mind when uh, when you hear somebody, but you're kind of like, okay, I got what this person is doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably a lot of the, the things that we're, we're all paying attention to, that we're all looking for, uh, looking for in, a, in a player that we like, this, besides the compositional thing, which isn't, you know, yeah. you can't expect that to be uh, the case for all people. That's that's one thing, having a compositional voice. The time thing. If someone yeah. doesn't have good time, it doesn't matter if the, yeah, if right. the harmonic language is all there and extensive. They could be playing substitutions from hell right. and it still wouldn't come across. I think that's a very big yeah. thing for me. Yeah, for me too. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's yeah, a, that's a first and foremost. And if, if they have time, and then to me, the second thing is like if they, if they play an interesting thing at the time. Yes. You know, like because if 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 they don't, this is just to to go down to this place and hear it quickly. Yeah. And also the inf you know the inventiveness of of the line, so to speak, hearing someone's identity, someone's creativity, uh, in a with the toolbox of stuff we all have at our disposal. It's like sure. we're all playing over the same changes usually, you know, whatever permutations those end up being at. But how does someone sound unique? You know, all those 12 notes that we all have so, at our disposal, what's, you know, how they combine them and the way to stand out and make it their own, you know? God, I have to say that so long after you, that's just like, I, I kept, I don't know, a lot of the states, like the thing that popped into my head at the time, this guy just ass fucked everybody. <laughs> and I was just like, they're assholes, they're like, this games. And I'm like, hey, just like, we're so, so, we're like, so, what's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great right. way to start a solo laugh. <laughs> it's just like, what? If I what walked you in a club <laughs> and that was the beginning of your solo, that would stand out to me. <laughs> yeah, it's just like like the notes and the harmony and substitutions in the time. It's just like so intense and like went so high. And it's just like they drop and back down like, damn. <laughs> Hey, oh, pump for it. Oh, it's <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, appreciate it. But yeah, it's just like, you know, what the fuck are you supposed to do now? Because uh, it's like, I, I use like, you know, simple, like, you know, for the most part, like my account of like harmonic stuff, like, you know, just like, I play like all people on the five chord, or go like a chai I play melodic minor, like on fans, for like my out sounds, or the sidestepping thing. I have like, you know, toolbox of like just stuff that's way more tame and like it felt to me like after your solo like my most like poignant harmonic tools felt like I was playing like a diatonic <laughs> harmonica you know what I mean I just couldn't like oh, I'll take it as a yeah, cut it, 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 it did come it just went really like to this place where like after it's just like everything felt so tame uh, you know what I mean yeah I mean I uh I kind of, after, you know, you study harmony for a while and experiment with substitution, I think there gets, you get to a point where um, you go, fuck it a little bit. And you, you say, well, what else can I use as a means of inspiration? What about the, just the geometry of, of the notes? What is, because your ears are still the judge at the end of the day. My problem with going that way yeah. is that like, I could never, like, if, it, if there was no real system, yeah. in place if I'm not thinking about, like, let's say chords that are cycling or a scale I'm going to, like, I would not know how to make it back in, uh, like, in time. Like, uh, I, feel, I felt like my, it would affect my time, uh, like, you know what I mean? Like, if especially if, if I'm going very geometrical, yeah. it's hard for me to keep writing that and come. Like, you don't even need to think about what I'm measuring. Yeah, like, I don't, I just don't know where, I don't know where I am. It's hard for me to, like, have some sort of, like, soft landing or things kind of feel like they drift. Anyway, yeah, right, can you, is this something, like, this is actually something that's very interesting to me. Do you have an ability to play, let's say, out, without thinking specifically about what you're doing? Yeah. Like, it can get to a place where I'm specifically just going for the satisfying time feel. But how do you choose what to play? 
Uh, uh, it, it's what's the forming the choices? It can be a shape. It, but is it, is it like a, is it a repetitive shape? Is it like, how are they strung together? Depends. Like, sometimes it can start off as uh, a definite, like, or have a definite course. Like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this arpeggio and I'm going to move it up a tritone. I'll move it up a minor third mm-hmm. and then continue moving that, that shape around until I find a satisfying place of resolution. When you find, like, when you get to there, is it kind of like, okay, here's the question. Let's say, let's say a specific situation, you're vamping on an E minor chord. All right. What's the amount of letting go of the actual, you know, imaginary blueprint of where your notes are it happens, like when you're going out? Yeah. Does it sort of disappear? And like, how are you seeing it in those moments? You mean like you see the notes in both? Yeah. Do you do you still do you still keep that sort of blueprint of home? Yeah. As you're going out. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of uh, you know having all these potential deep, you know um, kind of jumping off points, so to speak, or arrival points, like throughout you know, uh, across the fretboard. Well, you can see it as, uh, but the question is like, yeah. during the time Dur- you're uh, out, okay. can you still see the in, or is it some somehow you just kind of see where you, yeah. where yeah, you yeah, gotta I go? Still, I still see the end, or yeah, where I'm gonna land, having those goal tones. I, I do think uh, before anyone goes or tries to play outside, and you know this, uh, you have to have a, a really solid command um, you know, common harmonic structures are, are being able to arpeggiate, you know, any given thing throughout, you know. But this thing of like, you're describing of like actually playing out, like saying, yeah. I'm the fuck it. Yeah. I literally don't do that. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't let myself like huh. go there. You know, yeah. it's, it's like, let me ask you this. At what point in your playing was this a place you were like willing to entertain? Where you were not like cycling through substitutions or playing with scale and just going like out and out. That's a good question. I don't really know. I, I mean, maybe sometime in in college, where I was really uh, getting deeper into you know harmony and and study with with certain uh, professors uh, who were kind of opening the way I was thinking about mm-hmm. harmony and time and. Uh, a lot of other things musically. So I don't know. I don't know if I could pinpoint okay. a certain time. It's been a while, I'd, I'd say. Yeah. And I'm still trying to, you know, grapple with oh, when I do come up with ideas mm-hmm. substitution wise, how do I make them satisfying? You know? Yeah. Uh, how do I, you know, do this side stepping exercise and make it sound musical and not sure. boring? Uh, yeah. Yeah, is your is your uh, but similar but you can throw the lows on Skyward still? I love that. Yeah, I never know like what what is it on Skyward? I'm working on this uh, the Scott Kinsey keyboard yeah. solo. Uh, I love love transcribing that's the keyboard stuff. Uh, is a record he did with Jimmy Haslip, uh, and uh, this particular track is Gary Novak on it. But it's it's a monster solo. Yeah. And uh, I'll take snippets here and there from, you know, more players. I don't necessarily transcribe whole solos. Yeah. Most of the time I'm not. I'll yes. take, you know, chunks. Um, but, yeah, that's something I've been trying to work on. It's like a kind of 30-second note run, but very uh, interesting, very creative uh, lines, like contour-wise. And Scott's a fantastic player. Another yeah, LA yeah, guy. So it's just like... So mostly, mostly if I was just and they all so you like you all bunch of stuff. And you yeah. either, you all like really into fusion or do you also listen to jazz? Yeah, a ton, ton of jazz. I mean, uh, it's a, a cannonball Adderley thing that I was working on recently. Uh, yeah, it's it's all over the map. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's um, dude. That that actually answers quite a bit for me because you know it was. I, I always like you know I, I love Brent Stein. We have him on the channel, yeah, it's awesome. and he's a he's awesome. But like this thing that um, that he says about Alan, that every every moment of Alan's playing, what fits neatly inside these harmonic systems, 
it's like you make the system broad enough and you have enough systems of any you can yeah. come up with a name for anything yeah but like to me like then that's the thing that always sort of missed the mark because it felt like you know alan would just go to these other places and it felt like almost like the sh- the shapes he picked up fucking around in these things and sort of had a learning mode informed a lot of those choices but those choices had to be guided by like you know just sort of a much freer approach yeah thing where you're not really trying to do something that's ultra specific harmonic that you just gotta try to find stuff to me I feel a lot of times yes it's, yes you know, it's like you can't my thing was overanalyzing the notes sound harmonically they you know what to improve physically basically but also but physically were basically the same yeah And also, like, the difference between our IQ and whatever else is playing is not with me. Yeah. So it's like we're, we're basically the same people doing, doing more things, and it's just, it just makes no sense. I, I remember our bassist, I uh, this one, the last one called the job. It was analyzing the Jack Lombo Donnelly. Yeah. And he had a measure of the analyzer, but I'm trying to analyze this, it's too useful. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the same. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, you look inside the symbols, brackets, or everything. You know? yeah. Substitution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see 5 1. And you're like, oh, well, 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 five, well, one. you say 2 5, and number 2 5, you're crazy. You're using the frame, and then number 5 9, and number 7. It's like, oh, it's like a little scale for 1. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just, yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't, I just don't buy all the systems. To me, I couldn't prove it, but to me, Alan's stuff specifically has to do a lot of uh, being in the world of this plane. Yeah. Um, but I can't prove it, because it's so hard to... It's so hard he to had his it. own language. He really had his own way of thinking about it. Brett, I think in a lot of ways, has gone farther than anyone yeah. in terms of like trying to codify whatever that was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do think there's probably, you could cite a few instances right now where Alan was doing something and, you know, you could uh, cite muscle memory as the, as the answer or, you know, um, raw emotion as the answer for me. I don't think he was that conscious always of yeah. the shapes. He was, uh, you know, the, the, the lines of the, stru- the structure of the lines, yeah. so to speak, that he's coming up with and going on playing this scale and this scale. It just... Yeah, my, my problem with playing, I guess, in that kind of free way is not when things sound too out. Yeah. And when they, it's when they sound awkwardly in a, in the wrong thing. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you're playing just like a, too loud of a bit of like a major scale from like a different key and it just sounds like, like bad, like not dissonant enough, but certainly not consonant. Like yeah. You can like run into these chunks where you're just kind of, you know, And it's, I, I, I don't know, it's like, I mean, I guess to me, I just, um, I never came up with a sort of system to keep the rhythm going if I'm not receiving very direct orders from my brain as to the contour of the line. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, like, how, how, how would you go about, you know, not just being like, you know, practicing a thing like that and not just being repetitive of like purely muscle memory, like mechanical shapes? That's a big question. I think a lot of it has to do with while you're working on that stuff, how can you vary whatever it is the thing you're working on, no matter what the pattern is, and come up with something that maintains your interest, right, and not get bored? That's a a pretty basic criteria but um if you're not getting bored with it yeah. you know chances are the audience won't, won't be either sure but then there's the other side of the coin of getting up there and going oh this sounds like my other ideas but no one in the audience has probably heard them before right, right. um i don't know it's a good question yeah um because you but it's always chasing after that feeling of coming up with something new Uh, and oftentimes you do, you have to, you have to push yourself. It doesn't just happen yeah, naturally. I guess, I guess for, for me, that's like not something I traditionally, I mean, how should I say, like I try to come up with a new 
melodies yeah. inside yeah. this way I'm playing. But like the the one thing that like I never do is sort of abandon the system. Mm-hmm. Like I don't jump ship on the harmonic system of music. Right. And that's that's interesting. But like you know, honestly, I, uh, now I'm thinking like you know, if I could, what would that be like? You know what I mean? Like just mm-hmm. it is. Because that's that's really like you know that that level beyond playing harmonic. You never jump me on that bit. I do, but like in very specific ways. They're like it's it's typically like you know really like I have like very chromatic and kind of licks that like you know move at set intervals. Like I'll do like you know chromatic patterns that's more than like minor thirds or whole steps or like it's more like. These shapes are just sort of displaced, but I never. What I see you do is like it feels like the contours are not repetitive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As you're improvising that way, do you do yeah. it slower? Huh? Just slow. I never worked on it. No. no, do you do it slow? It's not about focus. It's like I do it slow sometimes. It just feels like you want fast. No, if I'm playing like if, oh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm exclusively talking about fast drums. Yeah, if I'm just playing, <laughs> but slow, you can get away with so much less. The contour thing is is a good. Point to bring up uh, because oftentimes I have to think in ways that might uh, not be super traditional or or boxy, uh, so to speak, when it comes to like the guitar. You know how how we visualize the guitar, um, and that affects the time feel. Yeah. Um, figure out different contours. Uh, it, For me, or exploring different contours on the neck is a is a very important part of um, making the thing sound or making the line sound interesting and feel good. Mm-hmm. So, oftentimes, for instance, if I'm transcribing something, I'm experimenting with all these different ways of playing a given line in a given octave. Oh, how does this feel here? Oh, it doesn't feel great to just play this major seven arpeggio mm-hmm. in this. You know, in this way, how about if I position like, like this? Uh, the best motion. Yes, to, yes. You know, the economy of motion, so to speak. Like, how did you say that? Like, a big part of transcribing for you is the that bit, like orchestrating it on the guitar. Like, yeah, figuring out where I want to play it, uh, experimenting with again the, the different uh, shapes that you can you can come across it because we have a lot of possibilities. Sure. And even though it's a bit of a maze, it could be our friend in that way. Yeah, you know, yeah. we have other options of how to position things. Yeah, hundred percent. What do you think about what guitar is today? Like, I'm not saying talking about anybody specific. Yeah, but just what guitar is today in, in our zeitgeist. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of made a maybe a bit of a resurgence in some way. Uh, the last two years, I feel like that. You know, sure. but. I still think it's probably like the most popular instruments. Like everyone wants to play guitar. Still, somehow, yeah. You know, um, which is amazing because its prevalence in pop culture has gone down, mm-hmm. gone dramatically. Yeah, uh, but then at the same time, you know, you'll see the most uh, popular girl rock bands with guitar. You know, not at the front and center necessarily, mm-hmm. but still. Uh, Uh, being featured that that's cool to me seeing you know always seeing a, a uh, an actual band playing rather than someone pushing a button mm-hmm. it's not of an image of it because I don't see that was as much of a guitar in a band but she definitely did freak some guitars sure and you're a part of hearts are you like do you like to like a lot of things when you listen to people play or are you like just revolted inside by some playing Uh, <laughs> I can be pretty cynical, but I feel like good music is good music. If I hear someone that's like earnest and uh, they're they have musical talent, I usually dig it. Do you, do you have pet peeves in music, like guitar? Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not talking about like tells and some of That's not interesting to me. Talking about more like guitars and how in your way, like in jazz, jazz fusion. I can't you hear I can't imagine that it's like it. seeing like an eighties guy playing like their version of legato, like that thing. I, I mean, kind of, I I guess we could call them pet peeves, but we probably all have those certain things that you know, certain qualms or certain dislikes. 
but they all just lead to how we want to approach yeah. the guitar. It, it, you know, it, and then it just becomes a, an artistic choice. Yeah, that's not nothing, right. but that's yeah. I'm yeah. curious. Right? <laughs> yeah. like I'm curious what, what kind of stuff would pop up for you. Oh, man. Um, sometimes uh, it's an articulation thing. Like, I don't like things that are, and if, if even in my own playing right here, you know, a video of myself and I don't like the way I articulated some certain thing and it sounds awkward, yeah. like stuttering, the equivalent of stuttering during speech. Mm -hmm. I'll go, oh, fuck, that sounded awkward. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, so when I hear it and someone else is playing, I go, I, I don't want to make that choice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how did he like that? How do you feel about like, that? Yeah, recordings of your song. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's good moments. Yeah, there are good moments. I go, okay, that, you know, I got my point across. But most of the time, it's just like, okay, yeah, that was yeah. whatever, on to the next. Yeah. And thank you for the show that you're playing it brought the guys so like this. The shows that I'm playing, yeah, like preparing for certain gigs. You know, I'm in more that way around. Like you've played a few shows now, and you're like, oh, I wanna this month here. Oh, oh, I see what you did. Yeah, it can definitely uh, take notes of what do I want to improve. I mean, video, mm -hmm. the capability of just videoing ourselves so readily is such a great tool, mm -hmm. and that's what I think. In addition to that, having technology at our disposal being able to pull up videos of any musician on the planet and study is what is a big part of what's pushed the you know yeah. um the number of like great players above any other time in history it also makes that makes sense it also yeah. makes them in some ways i don't want i don't want to say wolves but the same it's just when Patrick Bartley came out as a solo on the album, mm -hmm. Long to a Good Solo. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, yes. Yeah. It's like, we have not every song from Thailand. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm all Yeah, that's so We always. And I'm all very They always yeah. joke about like how like it doesn't matter if it's like Mateo Winkers or like any other guy on Instagram. They all have in their vocabulary now. Like the Derek the Derek Trucks Lake and John Mayer. Like the Derek Trucks Lake from the video with John Mayer and BB King, because that's and, on the Twin Bowl, yeah. they all stole the same thing. Yeah. And, and for the thing, well, it's awesome, right? Yeah, it's like everybody feels it's awesome, but it's pushing the algorithm just feeding us the same time. Yes. You know, so it's like, I, I do think it's like, you know, people that want to, like, you know, have some sort of unique thought. Cannot have, cannot have for dinner the first thing that the algorithm was giving them, even if they like it. Yeah, and and uh, it's it can be dangerous too because you know there's certain things that come across that are just technically stunning, and people want to jump from like A to Z yeah. rather than having to go through all the, the steps that give right. that gave that thing the integrity in the first place, right? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it's. Yeah, it's, it's there, they mm -hmm. sort of see a lot of things online now that are not a good place to start. But <laughs> and Michael Becker's solo is probably not yes. the best place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's a that's a very dangerous jumping off point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah, because it's like even if you win, you lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a part of it Yeah, there's a part of learning too much of us. Very yeah, good stuff, but um, it's weird. I, I think it's it's a strange thing because I, in, in a lot of ways, there are a lot of people that sound the best that people have ever sounded. Like when they get their shit together, and they also they take out the things that are too crazy. Like so, when I in, when I think about the way I play. And it's also way down in place, but like with me, it's a, it's sometimes it's so ridiculous. Like we should like, it's so ridiculous. But you know, it's like <laughs> it's like it's just it's so crazy. Uh, this visual line, what visual come to it. And I think a lot of people just when they steal something or they take something out, they're just be, uh, they're playing it safe in a way. They're good at, they're yeah. good at taking something like Michael Berger and well, I mean, what, what they're not they're not going to take that. They're taking the video that everybody liked, so they know that they're like that's that's the part that's like risk free. Like the stuff you're stealing is already foolproof. Like 
you know, five million likes, just like, yeah, I need to be like that guy. That's that's sort of the the secret drive behind it too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just being like, you know, being the guy that everybody likes. Uh, right, right. It's like a lot of sex on but the uh, guy listen to the come up, some of my comments like here the then sex one will check everything we do. And when when I do it I'm like, yeah, but was not to me, it was nothing to steal, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I know, like, to me, because I, I, I like stealing shit. So, like, yeah, we all steal from you. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, if we don't have anything that I can steal, then I'm down. But, but I mean, you know, you discover anything. Yeah, it's, it's know, weird, because yeah. we went, me and Nick went, just went, uh, a student of mine bought tickets to go see the family Kuzo in Chicago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he makes, he makes a sound that I haven't heard before. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's very immediate, and that's like a part, big part of success. It's, it's at the finger banging. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it, and it, it's, it's a good, it's a good sound. Uh, but, you know, not to talk trash, he's young and, and everything. He's fantastic. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's very impressive. But in his show, four songs in, about four songs in, you saw the span. Of what's going, of what's coming at you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's just like he he improvises and it's great, but there's a sort of range, and you've heard everything you're going to hear. Now it's just kind of like you know you're just taking another loud around the same thing. And honestly, like, you know when you're playing solo, it doesn't feel that way. Oh, it's not right. like the feeling is what the fuck's gonna happen next. Let's see how high this one can go. It's just like, oh, 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 you know, it's like, and that, to me, that's the shit. Like, you know, that's what I, that the one thing that's in common with all the players I really like, um, it's just that feeling. That's, that's the where it's like, it feels open-ended. It feels like, you know, the, the, if the situation is right, it's going to take the turn and to, towards something like unpredictable, towards something new, to like a high, even dynamic, rhythmically notalized, whatever. But there's, it's just having that opportunity for in that danger. Mm -hmm. there, you know, like yeah. Opportunity for some shit to happen. Yeah, because like, you know, I've heard every kind of solo at this point. It's like that's, for me, that's the only thing left. It's like, it's, it's like that's the that's element of surprise. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it's like, why, why do we, um, find songs that were still interesting and that would still kind of stand out uh, to, to, to tunes that we've listened to in the past. I think that element of surprise yeah. is such a big part of it. Oh, that, that that guy decided to play this change here right. instead of resolving in the you know place you might expect yeah. or how this chord change, you know, aligns with the, the one before and after, like the simplest, you know, put in the simplest terms, but that's what it is, like something sure. different than the element of surprise with yeah. the stuff we all have at our disposal. Yeah, think, right? That's, that's the, that's the thing. It's like, it's just that you can kick the vehicle into like manual and just like ride it yourself for a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not just rely on like the, the paddock. It's just, it doesn't, again, in the format that. Like, not again, not to take anything away from him. like a great player, but it's it is like the thing that was really incredible is that like the format that he got famous on is like very short. And when you see like thirty five seconds of something, you do have that feeling like, there's so much more. But like yeah. when you sit down and listen to a concert, it's like a lot. Right. That's a different kind. That's of... an interesting discussion. And yeah. it's that I, I feel like if we want to talk about pet peeves. It's like moving into the larger discussion of um, people's attention spans and how that's had an effect on how we enjoy music. Because on one hand, it's, you know, these short format, you know, Instagram, YouTube clips have done wonders for the proliferation of, you know, guitar, you could say, or just instrument independent instrumentalists. Uh, but on the other hand, it's contributed to people's lack of attention when it comes to like listening to a full composition, listening to a full out. It's like I, I've given this example before. You don't, no one listens to like a Mozart symphony for 20 seconds. It goes, okay, I get it. That's not how music works. That's not how storytelling works. Right. 
you know, you, you're not able to hear how a theme right. gets developed properly and fully expanded upon within the course of 30 seconds. That's not what composition yeah. is most of the time. I mean, uh, you could probably cite some John Cage tune that, <laughs> sure. that it does the opposite, but you, you get what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, and I think like for us, like the business that we, I guess, were in was the business of developing a set, right? It's like that's like, well, our set is our album. Right, you know, it's like right. We, we develop the set and the album and make it, try to make it our, to the best of our abilities, interesting 90 minutes from beginning to end. Yeah. And that kind of run the gamut composition and they in terms of like tempos, different grooves, different solo sections, different changes, different everything, just to where that's the piece of time we're given to do the thing that becomes the album. And then, you know, just to be able to connect with our audience, we're sort of forced to now deal with this idiom that's the opposite of that. Yeah. And if, you know, if the clips, you know, for instance, the, you know, X short snippet that appears upon someone's feed in turn uh, allows that person or encourages that person watching to go and listen to the full record, then I'm all for it. But I don't think that that's what's that's happening. Not, well, so. That's not how it works, because if it was, then, then the best jazz, jazz improvisers would be the ones that are most thought of. Like, right. To just right. take a random moment for the soul. Yeah. And that would obviously automatically become the content people want to hear, but that's never what's happening. Now, now it's a new generation that grew up with that aesthetic in mind. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I, who did I talk to? Josh Reader. I was talking to Josh. Yeah, and Josh. Josh. Right. And it's like, he's like, yeah, you know, it's like, I do like, I, say, I go to the studio three times a week and I spend like, you know, I do hundreds and hundreds of takes for like, you know, I work all day to get a 30 second thing. Yeah. And it's just like, that is yeah. so crazy to me. Yeah, like just it's just a crazy way because you know we do content, but after one hour of trying to get like a two minute thing done, I'm done. Yeah, I'm like, no, when we did all the pedals and stuff, it would take one course. Yeah. Oh, like one take, sorry, I'll take one take and then we would get. No, it, it, it takes so a lot of energy out of you. You know, I I know that feeling of all right. Well, what am I? Oh, it'd be cool to post X clip of yeah. you know X solo or trying to get a good take, and then you you, you know. Well, it's it's sort of, best. I mean, honestly, the way I see it is like you almost have to like, like promote. It's like it's like you are a hooker, but you have to somehow also be your own PR agent as a hooker. So it's just like, what? How can I show people my twagua and make them like really oh, excited it's about it? Huh? Only but fans. And yeah, it's only fans. It's the only fans. <laughs> no, but like, it's just like, like how do I take like the exciting part? Of what I do, and then it's just I know it feels like the most feel so Moorish. That it's like your most exciting thing, and it's like completely out of context, and it doesn't feel exciting at all out of context. It's the following when I never repeat it, and then you're sick of yourself, and then you're like, are they even good at doing? Yeah, and then you look at some, you know, like somebody who like does that, and then like study music you don't like, mm -hmm. and that's like filmed in a nice angle with like a little fig tree in the back. And like stairs or something yeah, like that. Yeah. They're on like a casting couch. Yeah, I also, I also like to fuck around. That's, that's another thing. That's you know, I like to fuck around when I play. I can make myself like when we do videos. Sometimes I did it. I can make myself be in the where I'm comfortable. You know, improvising. But generally speaking, when I'm on stage, I just I like to fuck around. So I'm gonna fuck up. Yeah, you know, but I make myself because like I want to see some shit. Yeah. Right. But if I'm, I'm just, I was never really interested in executing something, you know, it's from my house. So I learn it. I do it once and I'm good. I know how to do it and do whatever happens happens when you find it. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. It's Yeah, and that's a uh, good point. It's like trying to find, bridge that gap between playing material that's definitely prepared, that we feel comfortable with that we have under our fingers, so to speak. And the risk-taking factor of not just being okay with with uh, screwing things up in the sake of coming up with new ideas and uh, yeah, not a, feeling like you have to plug and play all the time. That's the opposite of that, you know? Yeah, it's not, I, I feel like live is the only place to do it because live, I feel like people, 
like we would play chip for jazz or if I would play marble or whatever we do. It's like I feel people are very full. Forgiving. Well, it's not that bad. I'm kind of forgiving, I think, than there and the reality of the music and all these devices that we have to make that sort of hologram of what we do are still very primitive. Like, people, you cannot take a solo outside of a room. Sorry, you just can't do it. It doesn't feel the same way. Like, somebody with all their slob can kill it. You know, it's like they, they can be in a situation where they're just, you know, sort of. They're playing in a situation that from the outside you judge one way, but from the inside you judge another, especially, you know, people with looser time feels play with looser drummers, and it's fun. Like Tom Waits' band with Michael Brecker is not going to make any sense, and Dennis Chamber with like Mark Rebo is not going to make any sense. It's just, you got to match. Like, again, I'm not talking about like amateur level, but like there's, there are many ways to kill it, but like, Playing fusion, I know for a fact, like, you know, a phone recording shows you something, but it's not really the way it landed. Right, right. You know, it's like it lands, like when you're really connecting with the sky. It's almost like a thing. Enough on saxophone. It's just, I can't, I can not listen to the cell phone. So I would say all the thing. Yeah. Not the thing, but probably, yeah, no, yeah, it's going to go in. And then we have to sound check. Yeah, right. Jeff Beck well, then. Oh, well, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. We need to do it too, though. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace is angry. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, actually, I actually got to light something. Oh, man. I, I love talking to you guys. Yeah. Well, that was great interview. Yeah.